Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, the last session we have seen, see like, uh, what are the prerequisites are there to install SQL Server, we have seen, okay, in the last session, right. So, uh, let's say we'll start with the installation. Uh, meanwhile, I think I've not uploaded by mistake PDF. So let me upload. Yeah, okay. Module one. Module one. Okay. Yes. Okay, uh, this yeah, it will be done. Right. So uh, let me start with. So previously we have discussed here like uh, prerequisites we have discussed. Means we have seen that uh, uh, Windows team or planning team uh, will create the server. They will provision the server and they will hand over to our team. Right. Yes. Then what I will do, I will take remote desktop of the server, will start working with the server. Okay. Right. One second. Right. Okay. Uh, let's we generally remember like, uh, uh, yeah, in the mails here, we have seen, you know, we'll write the mail to Windows team or planning team or system team. Uh, yeah. System team to create Windows server. Okay. With the required configuration. With the required configuration. So generally say like uh, we'll ask uh, Windows team after creating the server. Okay. So uh, grant uh, RDP access to all DB team members or group actually. Okay. Means what? So that uh, once the server is ready, we can take what? RDP, remote desktop of the server. In the same way, uh, yeah, we'll ask them to uh, enable .NET framework. Generally, it is a, uh, by default it is enabled. Uh, means what? From two thousand sixteen onwards, remember we need .NET framework four point x actually, which is by default enabled. But up to twenty fourteen version, uh, we need .NET framework three point five version that is not enabled by default in the server that's why our windows team will enable but generally say like just i will show you how they are enabling it is not our job i will go to control panel programs turn windows features on off see first option 3.5 by default not enable select the checkbox so okay next next finish mm -hmm. right from uh, 2016 onwards, remember, uh, it is not uh, required. 3.5 is not required, but uh, 4.5 or 4.x is there, which is by default enable. Okay, no need to enable separately. Right, right. Okay, uh, this is like uh, then. Then we'll ask uh, yeah, our uh, team, like uh, Windows team, to configure say, like uh, to create the drives. In general, remember, like as a best practice, uh, we are installing SQL Server software in one drive. Okay. Yeah. So we'll maintain data files in another drive. Okay. Log files in another drive. Backups in another drive. Okay, so like this here, we'll maintain in what? Separate drives actually, as a best practice. 
that is the reason here what I will do like uh, yeah, in the same email in the server request email. So I will mention the drive specifications also. I need these drives with these capacities with what is the purpose of each drive also I will mention. Okay, so accordingly our system team will create the server. They will provision the server. Uh, they will hand over to our team. Okay, right, right. In general, say like what are the common, like as per Microsoft standards, what are the common drive specifications we are using for SQL Server? What are the common drive specifications? Uh, check here, like uh, uh, we need one drive for SQL Server software. Okay, one drive for data files, one drive for log files, one drive for 10 dB, one drive for backups. Yeah, okay. So like this here, separate drives uh, will ask to our yeah system team. Okay, uh, check your common drives. Generally, we'll ask uh, some common drives. Just I will list here. Uh, uh, we can say like a, a file system architecture, we can say file system architecture or common drives. Okay, so we'll mention actually like a, uh, <clears throat> for uh, MS SQL uh, binaries. MS SQL binaries are base. Uh, we need what? One drive. Where we'll install what? SQL Server binaries means uh, which folders are created here. Bin and install folder we have discussed earlier. So it may be like a 40 GB size. Okay. So with some, uh, yeah. Some drive letters here, H drive. Uh, generally, yes, drive. So SQL Microsoft is recommending to install SQL Server software in what? Yes, drive binaries. Okay. Then uh, we need uh, one drive for data files. Okay. MS SQL data files. Like it depends on we have seen you know, like project questionnaire is there, right? In that they will mention the what may be the expected database size actually. So accordingly, we'll ask the data files uh, directory uh, drive size. So let's say 100 GB for data file to maintain what data files if it is a small uh, server. So we can go with the <coughs> K drive. Anything here. It's not compulsory. We have to use this. Maybe remember one time once you decide in your organization, we have we are going with the same these drives. We'll go with the same drives for all the servers. So that easily we can understand. Tomorrow, if you get some alert message that K drive. Okay, so utilization, space utilization is above 90% you got one alert message. Immediately you can understand that, uh, yeah, uh, it is a issue with the data file drive. Data file drive, okay, immediately we can understand. So like they say, like, uh, that's very much like, uh, uh, yeah, same format, same specifications will follow for all the servers actually in your organization. Right. In the same way, uh, we'll ask one drive for log files. Let's say 50 GB. L drive. Okay. So in the same way, uh, we'll ask one drive for backups. You may SQL backup drive. Uh, let's say we'll use 200 GB, almost all double of this data file. Uh, let's say backup drive, I will use here some 
uh, location, for example, M. Okay, so in the same way for uh, Tem DB, for Tem DB, remember, like a uh, separate drive with uh, 100 GB, for example, T drive. Uh, in the same way, here, like uh, for uh, system databases, right? Master, model, MSDB, TEMDB, resource, right? System databases we can maintain here itself if want. Otherwise, uh, still, if want to maintain separately, we can maintain separately. MS SQL system DBs. Okay, for system databases, we can use uh, maximum uh, 50 to 60 GB, or we can say maximum 100 GB. Not compulsory, 50 GB is uh, okay for us for system databases. Okay, like this here, like uh, we'll ask like this four or five drives, uh, uh, we'll ask our uh, team actually. Okay, yeah, so uh, it is clear, right? Like uh, almost all six drives we are asking here. Like this here, like depends on company to company, but some organizations we have only data files, log files, and 10 dB. Why? Because backups are maintained separately in the shared location means by using some backup tool. In that scenario, no need to ask this backup drive. Like this here, depends on organization to organization. Okay, so once it is everything is ready, then what we'll do, we'll connect to the server by taking RTP, then we'll start the installation process. Okay, so we can download the software from Microsoft website here while while uh, learning but in real time we have seen you know, we'll maintain one separate server for our team members like sql staging server something okay sql staging server so uh, in that server what we'll do uh, we'll maintain like uh, in that server, we'll maintain all our SQL Server softwares, okay? So as well as uh, uh, like patches, everything we'll maintain, right? Okay, so what I will do, I will copy the softwares here from the respective, our SQL machine, separate machine. After that, we'll start installation process. But here, while learning, remember, uh, you can download SQL Server freely. See here, Microsoft SQL Server uh, 2019 download. Right? So you can go to Microsoft website. We can download directly. Click here. Yeah, see here, generally we have to install in our local data center in our laptop right so i will take this one sql server on premises click on download see immediately uh yeah startup installation file is downloaded installation startup file yeah well, uh, directly you can download actually Varun, anyone can download from here directly okay no need to purchase anything directly we can download but remember like uh, uh, in real time compulsory we have to purchase here while practicing we can go with directly right click on this uh, startup installation startup file is there so we have seen that in this startup file uh, once we click over here it is showing very clearly download option is there go to download media select iso file select the path download okay but already i have said in real time we are not going to download like this already our team lead or manager has downloaded or our system team uh, or our licensing team 
uh, they have already downloaded it. They have placed the software in a separate location, shared location. From there, we'll copy paste, we'll start installation process. Right, right. Uh, click on download button, it takes some time. So the software is downloaded. Okay, uh, once the software is downloaded, I think I already have downloaded here. Yes, this is SQL Server 2019 uh, ISO file. Uh, it has here almost a 1.33 GB. Okay, once it is downloaded successfully, just right click on this ISO file mount. Okay. Yeah, so now see like uh, it is mounted as a separate drive. Right click on setup, uh, start installation. Directly we can double click, but better you go with uh, run as administrator. Yes, okay. Yeah, now see like setup process is started. See, uh, we, have, we have here one SQL Server Installation Center. This installation center was first time introduced in 2008 version. So here it is, uh, you can, ver can verify here, see, hardware and software requirements. Okay, so uh, we can download some other tools also. We can see the upgrade documents, like other documentations we can see. Right, let me go to installation. Here the option is there, new SQL Server standalone installation. See here, first one. New SQL Server standalone installation. Uh, check here, we have this here, we have cluster installations here. I will show you later clustering also. So, but see, these options are disabled, right? Why? Because I'm running the setup now in my laptop where we have Windows 11, means client operating system. That's why we can't install cluster in Windows 10, Windows 11. We need compulsory server OS, Windows Server 2016, Windows Server 2019, Windows Server 2022, for example. <clears throat> We'll see that later practically, no need to worry. Just here, uh, reporting services separately, we have to install by clicking here. Means it will navigate to Microsoft website. From there, we can download, we can install. See, once again, remember what features we have to install, right? We are not going to decide by our own. We can see in the project document or project questionnaire. There you can see. Okay, they will mention that we need database server, uh, SSRS, like that's here, they will list out what features they need. Uh, we have options are there, see, uh, install SSMS, see, same thing, just by clicking here, we'll install database server, database engine, then we can install separately SSMS, same thing, it will navigate to Microsoft website, from there we can download, we can install, but first step is what, installing database engine. Okay, this is for our BA developers like SSIS, SSRS, SSAS. Uh, this is the upgrade option is there, sir. We can upgrade from lower version to higher version. Okay, right. So we'll see that also upgradation process also as part of our course. Okay, so let's say we'll go with the first option, standalone installation. Okay. Yeah, uh, it has verified that the prerequisites are there or not. So Microsoft update, it is showing that do you want to go with updates? So let's say I don't want to go with updates, later we'll update, okay, after installation. Next. Install set of files. These are temporary files actually. So once the installation is completed, these files are automatically deleted in general. 
Uh, it is saying one warning here, Windows Firewall. Actually, it's here in this machine, Windows Firewall is on. That's why it is throwing this warning. Okay. So if I make it off, uh, it will not show this warning. No problem. We can continue. Okay. Right. Next. Check here, perform a new installation. Means you want to go with the, uh, what happened? This one is again. Yeah, first option it is showing. Perform a new installation or you want to add features to existing installation. Means what already existing server is there. If you want to add extra features like uh, integrate uh, reporting services, integration services, analysis services, or we can use this option. We are going with the fresh installation. Select the first option. Check here, it is already listing. These are the instances are already here, there. Okay. Okay, let me go with first option. Next. Uh, check here which edition you want. It is saying I'm going with uh, Enterprise Evaluation Edition, which is a 180 days uh, free edition. Okay. Means uh, it works for six months. It works uh, uh, all features. Okay. All features will work. You can practice all the options actually with this evaluation edition. But in real time, remember automatically will get the product key. No need to type also. Okay, right. Okay, uh, check your developer edition is there, which is also completely free. But see developer edition, we can use only for development and test environments. We can't use in the production. No need of license. The express edition is there. The express edition is also free edition. We can use this edition in production environment also. But remember, in express edition, we have very limited features. We don't have agent service, means we can't automate. We can have maximum database size up to 10 GB. Like this here for startup applications, for startup clients, they can use this express edition. Later they can purchase, they can convert into enterprise edition, okay, or standard edition. Remember, all these are free editions. Uh, this we can use in production environment, no need of license. Okay, developer edition we can use in development servers. Evaluation edition we can use for learning purpose in general. It has all the features of enterprise edition. Okay, let me go with evaluation edition. Next, I accept some licensing terms are there. Next. Okay, what features you want to install? Very clearly it is asking. What features you want to install? Sir, in general, remember uh, in the project document, if they say database server or database engine, okay? So here, see, we have to select this option, database engine. Or database server plus we have to select this integration services here why because for automation purpose ssis is compulsory for us for automation purpose that's very much both uh, we have to install and no need to take separate license for this ssis okay right so uh, check here, later if you want, we can add these extra features not required in general. Then, sorry, client uh, tools, uh, client uh, connectivity SDK, 
and client tools connectivity, we can use these uh, common features, which are installed only one time. Okay. Now, sir, like uh, instance directory, it is asking. Instance directory, in which path we have to install the binaries. SQL Server binaries should be installed in which path it is asking. Actually, this is the default path. Okay, uh, we have to mention here which uh, drive. Suppose let's say you have requested this file system architecture and already our system team has created the same. So which drive we have to mention here? Ravi Varma, Varun. Yeah. Yes, correct, right? Yes, drive. Yeah, correct, base. Why? Because binaries are there here. Binaries we are going to maintain. One question was there from Varun, uh, why to go for product key version when there is a free version with all, which is, uh, there is no free version with all features, right Varun? You, you mean developer edition or evaluation edition? There is no yeah, free edition. Evaluation, it works only for 180 days. After that, it will expire. Okay. So our server will not work. You can't uh, reinstall again. So server will not work. In the same way, in the as part of security, company security policy, we can't use uh, evaluation edition. Right. Okay. Uh, check it like uh, we have to mention here what? Yes, right. Just type here, yes, right. We can continue. Yeah, yeah we can't uh, uh, reinstall. Yes, correct. Sorry. So here also remember first time if you are installing in a fresh machine, uh, yeah, this here also we can edit actually. We can just put here yes drive, yes drive in all the three locations. Yes drive. Same. Uh, all the people are following, right? We are on the same page, right? If confusion is there, let me know. Generally, remember, like nobody will discuss all these points actually, just they will show you installation. Okay, next, 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 finish. But in most of the companies, compulsory, we have to follow these Microsoft recommendations. That's why I'm showing very clearly. That's why if any simple doubts are there, confusion is there, uh, feel free to type in the chart panel. Okay, no need to worry. You can ask me any simple doubt also, no need to worry. Okay, right, right. Okay, see in all the three locations, we'll type yes, yes, yes. Okay, if you want, you, uh, here, here, remember, I don't have yes uh, drive, for example. So we'll continue with the same C drive location for practice purpose, but in real time, how it is, just I'm trying to show you. Okay, uh, just I'm going with same C drive. Yeah, yeah, next step is there, Srikant. Okay, next. Uh, now it is, uh, let's see what I will do. Instead of C drive, I will go with at least uh, D drive. I think it is there in my lap. Okay, D drive is there. I will take D drive. Why? Because it's not recommended to install SQL Server in system drive, C drive. Okay. Yeah. So I will go with this next.
Okay, now it is asking here instance name. See, uh, see by default it has selected named instance, right? What is the reason? Already here default instance is there in my laptop, MS SQL server. Already we know if you see MS SQL server, it's meaning that it is a default instance. Default instance. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's say we'll go with the uh, already default is there here, MS SQL server means. That's why automatically it has selected named instance. We can type here instance name. Okay. So in most of the scenarios, remember in 98% scenarios, uh, we'll go with default instance. Okay. In one machine, one instance. Okay. Default instance. Right. But in some cases, very few cases, already I've said no, one, two percent cases. If you want to maintain two instances in the same machine, then we'll go with named instance. Otherwise, uh, no need. Okay. Uh, let me go with already default instance is there. I will install one named instance. Okay. Uh, let me take any name, actually. LIC loans. I'm saying instance name LIC loans. See instance ID also it has taken same as it is. Instance ID also. Uh, basically we'll talk about later instance name and instance ID later. Okay. So basically remember for applications uh, uh, we have this uh, instance name. Application server means our front end part team is there, right? So they will connect to our SQL server through this instance name. Okay, right. Okay, uh, check here. It is showing that uh, only these instances are there. Don't use these names, it is showing indirectly. Next. <clears throat> Okay, uh, now check here. Uh, it is asking service account. We'll talk about this service account in detail later. Now, briefly, I will discuss. Some confusion may be there. Uh, actually, remember, like in the uh, email, right, which we are writing to our Windows team, our system team, uh, in this email, we'll ask them to create service account also separate account for SQL server and share the details. In general what they will do they will share the account detail account name only means like a username just account name but while installation what we'll do we'll ask our windows team to share, uh, enter the password means they will not share the password to our team why? Because it is a Windows account, it should be maintained by Windows team only, right? That's why before starting installation, we'll send the mail to Windows team. Uh, uh, please uh, appreciate to enter the service account password. Anyone who is there in call out or on call, they will respond. Okay, at that time, what we can do, we can share the screen. They will type the password. But uh, just remember, only one point will have confusion. Uh, see, as a DBA, let's say uh, we will connect to SQL Server by using our own account. Yeah, this is a standalone installation, correct? That's why. Okay, later we'll see cluster installation. Okay, right. Uh, check here as a DBA. Just remember, uh, this is here. This is my production server. Okay. This is my standby server. Some other servers, maybe Arkin server, Windows server, some other servers actually. See very clearly. As a DBA, I will connect to 
our SQL server, right? This is our SQL machine. SQL server machine. Means let's say as a DBA I'm working and uh, let's say I will connect to SQL server. Uh, I, I will connect to DBA with my uh, own name. Let's say by using Ravi, I will connect to SQL server as a DBA. Okay. Uh, just remember this SQL server in this machine we have SQL server, right? This SQL server, uh, yeah, connect to OS. SQL server will con communicate with the uh, standby servers. SQL server will talk with the uh, Oracle server, means some other server, by using this uh, uh, service account. Okay. SQL Server, in the background, SQL Server will talk with other servers, including our OS, by using what? Service account. This is uh, uh, one important point we have to understand. As well as application also can talk with SQL Server using service account that we'll see later. But just remember, suppose tomorrow SQL Server needs some memory, SQL Server needs some CPU, for example. Okay, then remember SQL Server will communicate with other ser uh, means OS, I want some memory, I want some CPU by using its own account that is called service account. First add one purpose. Second purpose here, applications also, front-end part also, will talk with SQL Server through this service account. Later we'll see. To avoid confusion, I am not going in detail. Uh, understood, right? What is the meaning of service account? Understood all people or confusion is there? Murli Krishna, Ravi, Sampat, Srikant, Varun, Chalapati. Basic, uh, you got some basic understanding. Means server to SQL server to Windows, SQL server to standby server, SQL server to other servers, communication is done through service account. That, uh, yeah, it is clear for other people also. So this service account is created by uh, Windows team or SQL team? Murli Krishna. Sampath, already we have said, right? Already I have discussed. Like whenever you are asking the server to Windows team, system team, they will create the service account. Okay? Which is separate account for SQL engine. Yes, yes. I think other people are not responding. Uh, if any confusion is there, you, you tell me. Can you repeat again or... Yeah, something you can ask. Otherwise, if it is uh, your, if it is clear, just say clear so that I can understand, right? So I have to repeat again or I have to go ahead. Like, it will be clear for me. Okay? Just, well, because uh, interaction is important for us. Yeah, just uh, open the chart window in the right side. Uh, just you will be ready whenever I am asking some question. You can type just for interactivity purpose. Uh, if it's still confusion may be there for some people, no, no need to worry. Uh, in the second module, I will discuss once again in detail. Okay. Okay, uh, this is your service account. Actually, remember now while installing SQL Server, now it is. Uh, Check here, while installing SQL Server, uh, it is asking the service account, right? Service account, it is asking. So we can go with this default account while practicing, but in real time, what we'll do, the account is already provided by our Windows team, right? So just we'll say browse, 
will select the account, will ask our Windows team to type the password here. We'll share the screen, will give access to Windows team. Okay. So they will type the password here. Okay. Then we'll continue next. If it is working fine, uh, we'll ask our Windows team member. Okay. Thank you very much for your support. We'll continue. He will disconnect from the call. Clear, right? So, but here, see, I'm going with the default account. Later also, we can change these accounts. But in real time, compulsory will have a separate account. Okay. And make the startup type as automatic, which is better for us. Why? Because tomorrow, if the machine is restarted, automatically, remember, like, uh, uh, the service is automatically restarted. No need to restart manually. Okay, right. Uh, one question is there, who will give the service account to Windows team? No, Windows team can create it, uh, Varun. Yeah, if any, they will follow the, yeah, some naming conventions, which includes the server name, something in the name, uh, SRV, some name or at the last yes rv just for identification purpose service account okay right yeah, yeah correct correct yes yes we can raise the same request to windows team in the email that uh, create a service account uh, with password never expired, correct? Right? So then they will create it with, uh, yeah, password. Why? Because password should not expire, right, for service account. Otherwise, SQL will not start if the password is expired. Correct. Yes, thank you, Ashwa. Yeah, this is here, like, uh, yeah, just have selected here, automatic, just remember, not changing anything. Uh, collations here. Collation settings are nothing but language settings, actually. This is the default collation. Okay. SQL Latin 1 General CP1 means US English. CIAS. CI means case insensitive. AS means accent sensitive. In general, remember, we'll go with the same collation. But again, it depends on the project questionnaire. In the project questionnaire, we'll check one time what collation the project manager or application team is asking. Most of the times, they will say that default collation will go with the same option, default option. We can customize, we can change also by clicking on this button. Generally, we'll use this option to improve backup and restore performance. Actually, we have perform volume maintenance task one group policy is there at OS level. Okay, we'll see later. This, if I enable this, we'll get uh, backup restore performance is increased. Later, we'll see how it will increase. I'm not going to discuss now. Confusion may be there. Just here, I've selected this checkbox and have made this as automatic. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Next. Now, sir, it is asking specify SQL Server administrators. You can click here add button. We can mention our uh, name or temporarily we can say add current user. Means what currently with what name we have connected into server for this name login is created. Right now in my laptop, I have entered with my name here, Said, for example. For my name, login is created here. Let's take in touch. By clicking on add button, remember, we can mention our uh, other colleagues are there, right? As well as our group uh, account will be there. Okay. Our uh, three members team is there. Five members team is there. For our five members, we have group uh, user also. We can use that, uh, we can mention here, so that after the installation, so uh, everyone can connect, our group, DBA group members can connect, they can start working with. Okay, right, right. 
uh, check here like two types of authentication modes are there Windows and Mixer mode. Uh, we'll see later. Just I'm saying Windows authentication mode now. Uh, later we'll talk about this. Okay, right. So just remember if it is Windows authentication mode, same domain, same domain users can connect with SQL Server. What its meaning? Uh, just check here, like uh, again, I am saying if any confusion is there, please ping me immediately. Okay. So I can say next, next, finish also. Okay. It will be easy for you also, but we need to discuss all these points which are compulsory for us while working. Yeah. Domain user means uh, generally will maintain one server in your organization which is a windows server active directory server uh, and all our accounts are created in that server so that you can log in from different machines local user means what you can log in into same machine only so domain means in from any machine Okay, we'll talk about that later. Anyhow, Windows basics concepts we'll see. Okay, so check here. Uh, Windows authentication means what? Suppose let's say the server is there. Uh, server is there here. Uh, one of my server is there in airtel.com domain. Any domain, for example. So uh, my SQL machine as a DBA remember. I'm working in Airtel, for example, as a DBA. My machine is also there in the same domain. See, same domain. See, my machine is also there in the same domain, Airtel.com. Okay, dot in. Okay, uh, see here, as an employee of this uh, same company, I can connect to SQL Server successfully with valid credentials if the server is running with Windows authentication mode. For example, let's say you have your personal laptop, for example. Personal laptop is there. It is not there in this domain, actually. It is there in the work group. For example, see here. Uh, we know, right, if I go to this PC properties, uh, check here right now my machine uh, is there in what work group okay so if it is in work group remember like uh, uh, means it is not in the domain actually it is there in the work group in that case remember like uh, we have check here work group name is there. There is generally our Windows team will add actually into domain sometimes. We'll see. Uh, if it is in work group means what? It is not there in the same domain. In this case, remember, if the server is running here in Windows authentication mode, I can't connect from this laptop, from this machine. Uh, even we have valid login name, password, I can't connect. Okay, means what? Indirectly, we have to understand if the server is running in Windows authentication mode, if the server is running in Windows authentication mode, same domain users are, we have some other concepts also, I'm not going in detail. Just remember, same domain users can connect and work with SQL Server. If the server is running in Windows authentication mode. If the server is running in mixed mode authentication, the second one is here, mixed mode authentication, then same domain users can connect as well as different domain users also can access the server. Clear, right? Very simple. Don't get any confusion. We'll see again in security module in detail. Just remember, if the server is running in Windows authentication mode, same domain users can connect to the 
server. If the server is running in mixed mode authentication, same domain plus outside domain users also can connect. Clear, right, for all people? Ravi, Sampath, yeah, just, uh, it is clear, just ping me. Otherwise, I will repeat again. Very simple. Don't confuse anything. Just point to point, you have to understand now. Later, I will show you all these practically in security module. No need to worry. Just point to point, okay. Uh, same Windows authentication, same domain. Mixer mode means same plus outside people. Now, for example, let me just one question. My server is running in Windows authentication mode in my laptop, for example. Server is running in Windows authentication mode in my laptop. Okay. Uh, Sampath wants to connect to this server from his laptop. Sampath or Ashfag or Ravi, he wants to connect to Varun, he wants to connect from his laptop. Means from he, he will open SSMS in his laptop. He will enter login name, password also, which are correct actually. Login name, password are so valid. They are there in the server. Can he connect to this SQL instance which is running in my machine? Not allowed. Not cannot be connected. Yes, thank you very much. All the people are we are on the same page, I think. Yes. Can, cannot connect. But once I change my server to mixed mode authentication, once I change my server to mix later also, we can change actually after installation also. But we need server restart, means SQL restart. We'll see later. Once I change to mixed mode authentication, now uh, Ravi can connect, Ashwak can connect. Okay. So, Anyone can connect from his laptop directly. Only connectivity should be there inter through internet or just connectivity should be there. Correct, correct. That can be accessed from outside domain also. Yeah, we need some other also firewall something. I'm not going into that. Later we'll see. This is the overview we have to understand. Uh, Jyoti, you are not responding. It is clear. Um, no need to ask to everyone. No need to delay the class. But it's meaning that if you are someone is not responding, means we are following. No need to ask, right? Yeah. Uh, can we list our personal system? Sir, can we list our personal system? Mm. Can we list our personal system? Means... Uh, I didn't get you properly, Sampath. Yeah, we can connect actually from means personal means again, we can't connect in real time, but here in my scenario. Why? Because firewall will block actually. That is different story. I will discuss in the second module, configuring remote connections. Okay, just we have to understand here it's one point differentiate between Windows authentication and mixed mode authentication. Okay, right. And somebody is asking in real time which mode. It depends on the application actually. If the application vendor is saying our application works only with mixed mode authentication, then mixed mode authentication. If they are saying that uh, our application can work with Windows authentication also, uh, Windows authentication, okay? That's why in some organizations, maybe 90% uh, servers may run with Windows authentication mode. In some organizations, 90% uh, servers may run with mixed mode authentication. No need to worry. But only we have to differentiate. We have to understand. Right, right. Okay, 
So let's see, continue actually to start our next class. Let me continue. Okay, uh, see, uh, I'm going with Windows authentication. Then here, see, data directories. Okay, data root directory. Here, see, I will mention this, uh, uh, which path I will mention. Check here very fastly. I will mention this path. Okay, drive. Oh, sorry, what is this? No, no, here, uh, this one. Okay, U drive. Just I will change here to U drive. Means both, means actually it is a system uh, database drive. See, uh, change, see, data direct, uh, root directory. Here also it is change, system change uh, data uh, directory. Okay, user database directory, which is our user database directory. Very simple. Don't get any confusion. K drive. Just I will put here K drive. Okay. User database log directory. Just change here to L drive. Backup directory, uh, which is our backup. M yeah, drive. Right? Very simple. No need to change anything. M. M drive. Done. Correct, right? Yes. I will say next. But here in my machine, all these drives are not there. I will go with the default path. Clear, right? It should be clear, actually. Then, if I say next, it will verify, actually, all these drives are there or not. But that's why just I am going with the same uh, my D drive. Actually, remember, all these we can change later also. It's not compulsory. It's not meaning that it is fixed here. Okay? Later also we can change. I will show you how to change. But while installation itself, better to mention why unnecessary extra work, right? Yes. Go to TemDB. Uh, here, see, by default, sir, it is taking eight files for TemDB. If you can't change the paths, that's why I'm saying later also we can change if you want. But in 90% scenarios, compulsory. We have to change either now or after installation. We can't keep everything in C drive or single drive. Right, Jyoti? Okay. That's why they'll ask compulsory best practices also. What are the best practices you used to follow uh, for the SQL Server file system? Yeah, yeah correct. Number of files means here TemDB. See, eight CPUs are there actually in my machine. Eight virtual CPUs are there. That's why remember it is taking eight data files actually in my machine. Laptop, eight virtual CPU, eight, eight files. Here also remember we can change the TemDB path also. Here change it, remove it. Here also we can change T drive, for example. Okay. Uh, max DOP is there. We'll see later. This is number of CPUs actually. In my laptop, same right? Eight CPUs are there. It is taking eight CPUs. We'll see this. It is one concept is a max DOP. Very, very important concept. Memory. See how much memory you want to allocate to SQL Server. Right? Yeah. Uh, actually, remember in my machine, 16 GB RAM is there. It is taking here almost all 12 GB. If you take recommended, it will take almost all 12 GB. I Means generally remember 80 percent, 75 to 80 percent memory will allocate to SQL Server. Clear, right? In most of the scenarios. Okay, 7 80 percent memory will allocate to SQL Server, if there are no other services. That's why it is taking here almost all 12 GB, for example, out of 16 GB. 4 GB for OS and other applications. Okay, later also we can change this. File stream is there, no need. We'll talk about that later. Okay, okay, next. See, what are the options we have selected? All the options are captured in these files here, configuration file.ini. Once I click on install button, setup.exe will read this file. This is the file actually. 
See, we have mentioned, right, instance name is this. Uh, we need to, these are the service accounts, directories we have mentioned. Yeah, DemDB we have mentioned. See, memory we have mentioned. Max DAP we have mentioned. See, same details it has captured in this. Actually, remember, still installation is not started. The wizard has collected the information and it has updated the details in this file. Sometimes, remember, your team lead will send this file. They will ask you to install SQL Server. They will not mention, they will not say any project document or project questionnaire, anything they will not send you. Just remember, in that case, what you can do, you can go to advanced. Here, see, click on this install configuration file. It will ask, where is the file? Select the file. Okay. Immediately installation is started. No need to type next, type next, type next. No need to waste the time. I will show you anyhow. Okay. Just click on install. Installation is started. See, this is here how we are doing installation in real time. Okay, so it will take some time, five to eight minutes time maximum. Okay, so in a fresh machine, but already in my machine, already have installed, right? That's why it may take one minute time. It is SSD is there in my machine. It is then for install very fastly. Okay, right. This is here like SQL engine we have installed <clears throat> by following the project questionnaire. Uh, then we'll install SSMS. Okay. Uh, after that, we'll start working with SQL Server. Done here, installation almost all. It is finalizing. It takes here one minute time to finalize. Then the installation is completed. Okay. Then what you can do? You can open SSMS in your laptop, company laptop, or in your desktop. From there, you can check the connectivity. Okay, connecting or not from your company laptop or your desktop. Why? Because this server is there in the data center. By taking remote desktop, you have installed, right? That's why you can connect, you can verify connectivity is working or not. Okay, done successfully. This is here how we have installed SQL Server. We'll continue again in the tomorrow's session.